Hello, good morning and welcome to the talk on happiness, immunity and health. What do you think is right? Healthy people are happy or happy people are healthy? In this video, I am citing scientific studies in the field of medicine, psychology and psychiatry which suggest that happiness is linked to effective immunity which in turn is essential for good health. By the end of this video, I will share the most important tip to be happy and healthy always. The relationship between happiness, immunity and health is illustrated in this flow diagram. Happiness leads to stronger immunity which in turn leads to good health and good health shall lead to happiness and this cycle shall continue. In 1964, magazine editor Norman Cousins was diagnosed with ankylosing spondylitis which is a life-threatening autoimmune disease and was given a 1 in 500 chance of recovery. Cousins rejected his doctor's prognosis and embarked upon his own program of happiness therapy, including regular doses of Marx Brothers films. And he had a dramatic recovery. He later established the Cousin Center, which is dedicated to investigating whether psychological factors really can keep people healthy. Researchers found that there is a link between neurobiology and immunity. A specific type of immune cells in our body called T cells require tetrahydrobioptrin or BH4. It is needed to produce the serotonin or dopamine which are also known as happiness hormones. Researchers reported in the journal Nature that BH4 critically controls growth of T cells by regulating iron and mitochondrial metabolism. That is why the people with iron deficiency often suffer from immune problems. BH4 regulates not only the early activation but how T cell grow? The possibilities for medical applications are extremely varied from controlling autoimmune diseases, asthma, allergies to having a new way to trigger anti-cancer immunity. Psychoneuroimmunological studies of mechanisms as how this happens at the molecular level and how subjective moods connect with immunity showed that mental states such as stress can influence the health. Professor Cole used genome-wide transcriptional analysis looking at broad patterns of gene expression in cells to study how do these mental states get out into the rest of the body. They found that negative mental states such as stress and loneliness guide immune responses by driving broad programs of gene expression, shaping our ability to fight the disease. The way we see the world could affect everything from the risk of chronic illness such as diabetes and heart diseases to the progression of conditions such as HIV and cancer. Brain is directly wired to the immune system. Portions of the nervous system connect with immune related organs such as thymus and bone marrow and immune cells have receptors for neurotransmitters suggesting that there is a crosstalk. These connections seem to have clinical relevance at least in cases of stress. In another study conducted by virologist Ronald Glazer and his colleagues, they sampled blood from the medical students and found that during a stressful exam period, they had lower activity from virus fighting immune cells and higher levels of antibodies for the common virus Epstein-Barr, suggesting that stress had compromised their immune system and allowed the normally latent virus to become reactivated. It is now accepted that the body's response to stress can suppress parts of the immune system and over long term lead to damaging levels of inflammation. Large epidemiological studies including the White House studies which has been following thousands of British civil servants since 1967 suggest that chronic work stress increases the risk of coronary heart disease and type 2 diabetes. Low socioeconomic status increases susceptibility to a wide range of infectious diseases and there is considerable evidence that stress increases the rate of progression of HIV. Professor Cole's study published in 2007 looked at loneliness. Social isolation is one of the most powerful known psychological risk factors for poor health. They looked at gene expression in the white blood cells of 93 chronically lonely people who had said consistently over several years that they felt lonely or isolated and were fearful of other people and also in 93 people who said that they had great friends and social support. Researchers identified 209 genes that distinguished the lonely people from the social ones. They were either 
regulated up to produce more of an individual protein or regulated down to produce less. A particularly large proportion of the upregulated genes in the lonely group turned out to be involved in the inflammatory response, whereas many of the down-regulated genes had antiviral roles. In social people, the reverse was true. This study linked a psychological risk factor with the broad underlying change in gene expression. There was a similar shift in gene expression in individuals facing various types of social adversity like imminent bereavement and low socioeconomic status. Professor Cole also studied the possibility of reversing the adverse effects on gene expression caused by stress. Studies involved 45 stressed caregivers and 40 lonely adults. They found that course in meditation shifted gene expression profiles in the participants' white blood cells away from inflammatory genes and towards antiviral genes. A study led by psycho-oncologist Professor Michael Antone at the University of Miami, Florida involved 200 women with early stage breast cancer. In those who completed a 10 weeks stress management program, genes associated with inflammation and metastasis were downregulated compared with those women in the control group who attended a one-day educational seminar. Meanwhile, genes involved in the type 1 interferon response, which fights tumors as well as viruses, were upregulated in the women who took the stress management course. Inference is that our mood matters. If we change the psychology, the physiological changes happen accordingly. Professor Cole and Frankson investigated what happens in the body when people are happy. They asked 80 participants the questions such as how often in the past week they had felt happy or satisfied and how often they felt that their life had a sense of meaning. The questions were designed to distinguish between the hedonic and eudaimonic happiness. Hedonic well-being is characterized by material or bodily pleasures such as eating well or having sex. And eudaimonic well-being refers to deeper satisfaction from activities with greater meaning or purpose such as intellectual pursuits, social relationships and charity work. The researchers were surprised to find that the two types of happiness influence the gene expression in different ways. People with a meaning-based or purpose-based outlook had favorable gene expression profiles, whereas hedonic well-being, when it occurred on its own, was associated with profiles similar to those seen in individuals facing adversity. At the end, the most important tip to be healthy and happy always, go out, socialize with people, work for community, be happy, get immunity effective and lead a healthy life.